Hi Fabio, thank you for, my client is making a 100k house and says he cannot afford to pay me 5k for my renders. What do I do? Hi Fabio, thank you for my client it costs too much to make renderings for his buildings because the value of the building is low. Hi Fabio, great job. It seems like all my clients find my services too expensive. I cannot sell my pictures for more than three, four hundred dollars per image. Okay, so you see where this is going. Hi guys, Fabio Palvelli here. Thanks a lot for all the messages that you send me. Please, for all your questions, send me an Instagram message. It is best, you know, all messages will be there in one place and it is easier for me to read them and not miss them. Today, we're going to talk about how to deal with low budget clients. We can assume that there are mainly two types of low budget clients. One is the client that simply has no clue how much a rendering costs. It might be that it is the first time that they're hiring a visualizer to get something done and maybe their price expectation is way too far off from what you're offering. So their response, although negative, might be genuine because they might have miscalculated the budget for marketing their building or product, of course, depending on what it is that they're doing. And then there is the other type of client that does understand the cost of a rendering but that instead is using all the tricks in the book to lower your guard and pushing you into cutting them a better deal with your services. This happens very often when new clients make a first contact with a studio or a freelancer. I hear a lot of artists complaining about this. Personally, I don't see this as a problem. What you have to understand is that clients can leverage much better than artists do. If this were to happen to you watching this video, all you need to know is that this is the nature of doing business. In fact, dealing and negotiating are things that you should get used to. The problem is that, as author Cynthia Klosky would say, artists are the best negotiators against themselves. Now think about it. How many times have you prepared a price proposal for a client and then you start to discount this price because you thought it would have been too high. I remember talking to this friend for which I did some consulting work recently. We went through a proposal he made for a big and relatively well-known US Canadian company. It was a really big branding project, at least six months of work, loads of technical skills required, he needed at least another five people to work on this with him. It was not an easy job, it was actually very complex, but if he got it, that would have been a very big payoff. I remember we did all the calculations, we looked at the total, it was something north of a quarter million dollars. And the first thing he said, he tells me, oh, no, 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 they will never pay this amount. This is way too much. Probably they were expecting something like 20K tops, he says. The thing is, he did not know that. He just assumed that, basing himself on his own perception of value. Do you think that a company that makes millions every month has never gotten a work proposal worth that much money before? And the sad part is that I have so many similar stories to this one. And I also did it a couple of times myself. Anyway, I'm sidetracking. When you write up a proposal for your services or if the client is approaching you with a given brief, clients will very often use the excuse of a budget to throw you an anchor. Now, I talk about anchors in some other of my videos, so please go and check them out. I think they're very useful. They throw you an anchor to limit your possibilities for you to negotiate higher prices for your services. When this happens, you need to evaluate which type of client you're dealing with quickly depending on the type of anchor that they're throwing. If they approach you with a ridiculously low budget, say one tenth of what your work is worth, then it means that your client is looking for a low end type of service. They do not value the help that you might be able to provide and they are not interested in your ability to consult them. And likely they are not looking for a long-term business relationship. In other words, it's a hit and run. My advice to you is, be polite, send them a pre-made email, letting them know that you're very expensive, that you provide very high quality service and that they cannot afford you, that's it. Program yourself mentally to be better. The chance that these guys might get back to you is almost non-existent. But then again, do you really wanna work with these guys? Waste no time, do not complain about them, do not let these people ruin your day, it is not worth it, move on live a happy life. Then there are clients that will come back to you with, say, 50% of what you're asking. 
This is also an anchor, but if these clients are willing to pay you half of what you proposed, what does this tell you? Well, for sure that they're more willing to talk to you than the other cheap guys, right? Now, if you have watched any of my past videos, you know that this is the reason why I tell you, especially with new clients, to raise your prices of above 15, maybe even 20% when making a first new contact. Because guess what? Now that your price is 20% higher than usual, their starting negotiation point will be 20% higher than it would have been if you started from your normal price. You see, we're going somewhere. Now, an email like the message from before about the house for 100K and 5K for renderings being too expensive and all, the client might actually be right. 5K might be too expensive of a risk to take for a project that can only generate 95K, especially if the price of the project is dictated by the market itself. If me as a developer, I know that I will likely get 100K selling this house because this is the market price, I will want to minimize the amount I have to spend for the visualizations. That is common sense, right? Why would I need to spend 5K if my earnings do not increase? Actually, I will likely lose money investing in visualization. At this point of the negotiation, the artist will freeze. The artist will think, okay, client is right. I cannot possibly charge him 5K and make them lose money. As a consequence, the artist will start negotiating against itself in order to be able to provide images at the lowest price possible. And that's because artists never ask themselves, what if that 5K investment from my client can bring the price of the house, say, to 120K? Can my visualization add 15K to the value of this house? And if yes, is 15 extra K worth the investment of 5K from my client side? Now, I'm not saying that my visualization will raise the quality of this house because a rendering will not necessarily make a house better. But I am saying that by giving your clients better images, you give your clients better tools with which they can market their product better and maybe make even more money. Of course, the practicality, the implementation and the effectiveness of your consultation as a visual designer can only manifest itself when you have delivered successful projects to clients before. And these, I'm afraid, will require time and a lot of experience, loads of disappointments, and a lot of rounds of iterations. So if you're a fresh freelancer, do not jump on this if you're not sure 100% that you can deliver a successful projects. And even if you are sure, I would double question that. Trust me, it is very easy to get burned. This is what separates a professional artist from someone who is just starting out. I have had situations in which when the client all of a sudden was made aware by the artist of the value that was being added to their product and the value was not bullcrap, but the result of years and years of doing excellent work, the conversation suddenly flips and the budget is not a problem anymore. You put yourself in that situation and suddenly, instead of dealing about how much money you need to be paid for your work, you start talking to your client about strategies, about implementation techniques, different ways to market their product, and so on and so forth. You will finally see the enthusiasm in your client's eyes. You see, clients do not pay you because your images are pretty. Well, technically they do, but the real reason they pay you is because your images work and one way or another, they make the money. Your images give your clients value. Otherwise, why would you think they would ask you to do them? How much value you say? Well, this is really up to you to figure out. My name is Fabio Palvelli. Thanks a lot for watching. See you next time.